So we, I'm kind of repeating some of what we did the other week. I'll put our graph back, the graph I have back up, I'll put it back up. But um, we were working with the path five times cosine of t, five times sine of t, square root of 11 t was our path, our curve. And again, what that curve looks like is the helix-like curve that I just drew. Okay, it's the software that we have here is kind of changing its color as it spins around. So its tangent curve is given by negative 5 sine of t by cosine of t square root of 11 where to find the derivative of the space curve, the original curve, I take the derivative of the individual parametric formulas. So I take the derivative of the x formula and the derivative of the y formula and the derivative of the z formula. And we graph that vector at a certain value of t. Um, I think we were using t equals 1, so just to have an example, um, at t equals 1, from the point r of 1, so r of 1 is 5 cosine of 1, 5 sine of 1. I probably designed this thing with the elbow in it. <laughs> 5 sine of 1, square root of 11 times 1. Okay, that vector points from the origin. Okay, see this vector points from the origin to this point. So that's kind of what is meant by R of 1. It would be the vector that goes from the origin to this point. You kind of get into an area where technically the the curve is being traced by a vector, but the curve itself is made up of those terminal points. So the curve itself is not the vectors, it's the terminal points of those vectors. But then this vector, you want to think of it as from its initial point is from R of 1. So if you were graphing both of those. Okay, so first I'm graphing R of 1, so 5 cosine <coughs> of 1, 5 sine of 1, and then square root of 11 times 1 is still square root of 11. And we want that to be from the origin, so it's actually made into different color than black. tangent vector, we're going to graph it from that point, that terminal point, so 5 cosine of 1, 5 sine of 1, square root of 11 is my initial point, and the tangent vector then is negative 5 sine of 1, positive 5 cosine of 1, square root of 11, and we will make the tangent vector red. So, 
So that's probably a good view right there. Okay, so he, here is R of T. Starting from this point, there's R prime of T. Now, as I mentioned, a lot of times in physics applications, you might be interested in the direction of the tangent, but not necessarily the, the exact tangent vector. Hence, you might want the unit tangent vector. The tangent vector turned into a vector of length 1. So we make all vectors length 1 by dividing them by their lengths. So this particular space curve, the length of its tangent vector ended up being constant because you take the x and square it and you get 25 sine squared and the y you square it you get 25 cosine squared and then the z you square it you get 11 and Pythagorean identity tells us that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 so this turns into 25 plus 11, which is 36. So for this particular curve, no matter where you make a tangent vector, its length is 6 for this particular curve. Other curves, that won't be the case, but this circular helixy type curve, it is the case. So my unit tangent vector is the tangent vector divided by the length. So negative 5 sine of t divided by 6, 5 cosine of t divided by 6, square root of 11 divided by 6. That's the unit tangent vector. And we, your, the books use t to represent that. In a book, when it's representing a vector, usually it, it prints it in bold. So if you're looking through the chapter, this, this would be kind of written in like bold print. That just means it's a vector. Okay, so if I can try to graph that in black, it might show up on top of that red one. Um, so all I'm doing is taking my tangent vector, which I just graphed, and I'm going to put divided by 6. Six and the little there's a little vector on top of it that's black that is length one. So it it drew it kind of on top of it, it's just a little hard to see. Alright, so all of that is review from Thursday. The next thing we're going to add to our list of important measurements is a vector called the unit normal vector.